What's up guys, The Blix here again. Welcome back to another video. Hope everyone's had a good week. Finally Friday and uh, it's time for some more Men of War Assault Squad 2. In today's video we're going to enjoy the Great War Realism mod which is a very very good World War 1 mod. We've played it before but it's been a while now so it's nice to be back in the trenches. Um, I've promised you guys a fort video. Unfortunately this is more of a trench video but it goes well in hand with uh, with World War One, so hopefully you'll enjoy the onslaught. Uh, if you have any other questions or complaints, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm gonna be making these video intros using my camera, uh, with me on camera. Um, it saves me time when I get in game and I do these intros, I start talking about all kinds. Over here, or in this seat, all I can focus on is the camera and everything I have in my head. I don't have to focus on all the the details about the battle and stuff and that's when we get the intros that last up to like 10 minutes and that's just too long. Hopefully the audio is better. Uh, I had some issues with the previous video. Someone said it sounded like I was in my kitchen. Hopefully the echo is somewhat fixed. I'm actually in my living room. This isn't my kitchen exactly but um, but yeah microphone works now apparently so uh, hopefully you don't mind me doing these uh, intros. Um, enjoy the video, let me know what you think about the, uh, the, the map and everything in the comment section down below and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow in another battle and potentially also a second video. Um, not sure what we're gonna play but I have some very exciting news for next week so uh, I'll catch you soon. Bye. All right, let's get the battle started. So I promised you guys a World War I fortress. This isn't much of a fort, but it's a trench fort. It's a trench system. It's a trench defense. I think trenches and World War I go pretty well together. I think you all agree. Um, so um, here we go. American gun fortress or gun position is, is what I like to call it as well. There are indeed a lot of guns here in a fairly small area. The map is pretty big, but it's a it's an open no man's land and uh, well the first wave of <laughs> German landwehr have uh, started their attack. Um, the first guy who died was actually the, the leading officer on this flank. He was hit by one of the four field guns up front. 37 millimeter shell to the face. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, back behind the, the the four corners that have one Vickers team and one uh, uh, 37 millimeter field gun, we also have a total of eight uh, howitzers. Uh, and behind those howitzers, we have uh, four mortars. Uh, we've also got a bunch of uh, regular infantry with rifles and uh, light machine guns. We also have an additional Vickers per side. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty sturdy defense. I'd say we've got about a company defending here. Uh, I love the new models and skins for the Americans. They look absolutely fantastic. I'm going to try and give you guys a better look. So let me know in the comment section down below what you would like to see uh, more of, uh, especially in terms of World War One and World War Two content. I like making forts. The majority of you seem to click the videos, and if I can get more of you watching and enjoying videos, then that is most likely what I'll spend time on. Uh, these maps don't take that long to make, but the reason why I couldn't upload a video yesterday was because I was simply working on this. I did, however, start my day a little bit too late, but yeah, you catch my drift. So it's a it's a fairly nice map. It's it's plain, but it's 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 got the detail it needs. Uh, there's a few ruins here and there, and uh, overall, just a lot of stamps and variation in elevation that gives it that extra layer of realism. I like how the trench system is sort of elevated a, a little bit and all the timber that they could find on the ground and from all the trees around here uh, have been used to sort of support the uh, the elevation and the structure of the area. So I like it. It's, it's, a, it's not a bad map. I'm going to go ahead and pat myself a little bit on the shoulder. It's been a very, very long time since I was mapping, like several months. But I like simplicity, but also... Um, Pretty, prettiness. It needs to be simple, but pre pretty. I don't know why I can't speak today. It needs to be pretty. Pretty. Oh boy. So the first wave of Landwehr were uh, repelled by the American guns. I don't see an overwhelming number of uh, casualties either. A uh, few guns lack uh, crew members, but that's about it. 
It's easier to hit a gun crew above ground uh, than a soldier hiding in a trench, or taking cover in a trench, rather. Uh, the second wave of Landwehr soldiers have now hit the field. Uh, the first two waves are um, will be attacking the fort from 360 degrees, so all around. Uh, and it's going to wear down all sides. After the first two Landwehr waves, we're going to move on to regular infantry and then stormtroopers. We might also see some armored vehicles. It'll be interesting to see how the fort tackles uh, vehicles. Um, but yeah, holy shit. When those howitzers get going, all eight of them, the entire area around the, the fort itself is just demolished. I mean, we're going to zoom out to just get a good look at what's going on here. You'll see all the explosions and all the smoke. Some water being tossed up into the air as well. This is just beautiful. It looks like a symbol of some sort. Or like some sort of ornament on a fence or a building. I kinda wanna use the map for Warhammer 40k battles too. Any like no man's land map works great for uh, Warhammer 40k. Any like World War I scenario kind of works. Anyway, you know, all the trenches and all the massive charges and formations of infantry and all the artillery and the landscape. I just, I really think it works. This could potentially also work for Star Wars, like some sort of weird distant planet. Um, but yeah, you know, give me some time to just do some touch-ups. I can add more variety, more like cover, and I can perhaps remove the trenches here in the center and make a small village or something else. Maybe a big hill, so it's like the fight for the hill, and it's got barbed wire and stuff around it, trenches and everything, so it's like one of those big, cool entrenched hills. Yeah, that would be cool. Small lag spike signals. It's time for the next wave. The third wave has now hit the battlefield. German regulars this time around with MG support. So the weaponry is being stepped up. There's a few surviving Landwehr soldiers too that will join in on the the charge. But actually, there's quite a lot. Now we're going to start hearing some of those MG08s going off. Yeah, we'll see if the uh, the regular German infantry can make uh, better progress getting closer to the, the trenches themselves uh, than the Landwehr did. There's more craters too, so the longer the battle goes on, there's more cover for the German attackers. That is something to keep in mind. We also have two vehicles, two different types of armored cars. Here's one with three MG-08s. It is sort of like a tractor in a way. And uh, over here on the other side, we have uh, a vehicle with a single gun. And I do believe the machine gun is a uh, Schwarzlose. I like the side pipes, the exhaust on the side. It's got a, a very cool look, to be honest. And the howitzers are quick to target the armored cars. It is actually the only target they're targeting right now. This one took a direct hit. I saw some of the, the metal and stuff from the, the car itself fly off. So yeah, this one is knocked out. The other vehicle is still functioning and it's just taking all fire possible. I think it might have had enough now. How many <laughs> howitzer shells can an armored car take? <laughs> yeah, I think that's, uh, that's them gone. Beautiful. Yeah, when these howitzers get going and if, if the Americans can protect them and keep them alive and functioning, 
I think they're gonna win the battle for the for the US here. Um, if if the Germans manage to bring some down by killing the crew members, it's going to drastically reduce the firepower of the fortress. Sure, the mortars are great. Sure, all the rifles and machine guns are good too, but uh, the Germans are are picking them off quicker, uh, and they're really starting to bring down numbers here in the the corners. This trench is. Uh, about halfway cleared over here to the left um, a few more survivors remember we're only on the third wave over here well this one looks not so healthy at all actually this one is almost empty but the two guns up top are still functioning got German infantry moving in closer here still Landwehr alive on the battlefield which is insane considering the fact that they've been uh, Active and fighting now for many, many minutes, taking many, many shots. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if some manage to actually survive till the very end. So yeah, the craters are being used, uh, which is nice. Works for the Germans. The fourth wave has now been deployed. That is going to give the Germans a nice boost of manpower. I'm going to list... The numbers down in the comment section down below, like the total. I think we're looking at, what, 1,500, 1,600 or something? Close to it, at least. There's 400 men in the first wave. There's two waves of that, which makes uh, 800, right? Uh, then in the third wave, there's another 200, so that's 1,000. Fourth wave, 1,200. Fifth wave, yeah! 1,400. 1,400. 14, 14, 14, 100. Way. <laughs> All right. 1,400. Cool. Oh, yeah. They're getting closer. Like, I hear the American guns not, not silencing or being quiet, but the Germans are starting to bring them down. They're, they're definitely starting to empty out the trenches here. Uh, if, a, if a gun is working... Oh, look at the officer. Still calling in the coordinates and stuff. If a gun is active, it only usually has... By now, it should probably only have one crewman alive on it, so, you know, or none at all, I suppose, but then it's not really active. All the vickers on all the flanks are um, are down to one man. The guns over here are down to one man per gun, which means uh, as soon as one more bullet hits the, the crew, it's gone. It's deactivated and disabled for the remainder of the battle. And the small, like, trench aisles out here on all the four corners are definitely starting to empty out a lot more now as well. And look at the artillery, how close these rounds are falling. The Germans are getting so much closer now. Look at all the shrapnel hitting all the... Oh, man, hitting all the dirt around, just kicking off so much uh, dirt. It's beautiful. It's actually very nice. We might experience a bit of calm here before the final storm. And interestingly enough, I call it storm because, well, we've got stormtroopers coming in here. Uh, probably also supported by a few more armored vehicles. The howitzers are going to be busy targeting the vehicles, so uh, the infantry are going to have uh, an easier time getting closer to the trenches themselves. It's going to be a very hairy situation. It's going to be on the line. It's going to be a very, very, very close finish here, and I'm very excited to see how it's going to go. That is the lag spike that is signaling that the last wave has been deployed. Um, two howitzers are down here on this side. Uh, another two howitzers only have one crewman, uh, crewman crewing the gun, so that there is another example of one more bullet and you're gone. You're going to lose two more howitzers. Uh, the vickers and all the, the small sides here, or the sides of all the corners or in between the corners, rather, are still crewed with one soldier behind each gun. But man, are we starting to really lose out on numbers now. What's interesting about this last wave now is stormtroopers with... Uh... Whoa, wait a minute. It's oh, There we go. I was like, these guys aren't stormtroopers, but here we go. 
on the opposite two flanks now that weren't actually uh, receiving any uh, serious fire from uh, the regular infantry previously. They only came from north and south. Now we have stormtroopers and more vehicles coming in from the east and west. So they're going to hit the sites that have had it slightly easier for the last two rounds. Oh boy, are they getting closer. And we also have SMGs, the MP18. So I suppose this is a 1918 battle with some late war equipment. More vehicles arriving as well. This is going to be such a hairy and close situation. Oh, the artillery is focusing down those vehicles, but it's leaving the infantry uh, unharmed. All the infantry has to take care of now is, is the uh, the men in the, the trenches and all the machine guns. But as soon as those armored vehicles go down, I think the, the stormtroopers are going to receive living hell on earth when those howitzers, howitzers start firing. Another two howitzers are down. We're looking at only four active now. Only four out of the eight. The three mortars are still kicking. They're still, uh, they're still uh, lounging shells. Oh boy. Oh, and this vehicle is active. No howitzer targeting it, perhaps reloading. Not sure what's going on, but they're gonna start taking a lot more casualties in the trenches now. That vehicle is gonna run amok. Oh, I, oh we're, ooh, ooh, I'm not a huge fan of the close howitzer support, but it might just be the only thing the Americans can do to counter the uh, the vehicle right now. Um, yeah, they need to take it out. The stormtroopers may be able to be prevented. Oh, that shell went right over. Look, they're targeting few of the remaining two guns here. Two of the remaining guns. They might actually be the only two remaining guns right now targeting the vehicles. Oh, heroic. Heroic performance from the gun on the right side. Now it knocked out the crew. But are there any infantrymen remaining to really deal with the with the, the German infantry? I have no idea. Like, I am I'm confused here. Well, there now I there's definitely American rifles still in the trenches. They've been in cover, they've been down on the low, probably just avoiding the vehicles. Now that they're both gone, the uh, the ger uh, or the remaining American soldiers can return to their duty here and their attempt uh, in defending the, uh, the, the flag here in the center. Very few American soldiers remain right now. This is gonna be on the hair. Oh man. Yeah. The artillery. The, ar the artillery. The artillery might still be able to turn it around. I'm excited to see. Oh, look at that one. That one was a good, good shot. Yeah, if these remaining barrages can connect well, it uh, might secure the Americans a victory, but the Germans are getting closer and closer. There's not many stormtroopers alive, though. There's only a handful here on this flank, and on the opposite side, they look to be pretty suppressed and uh, repelled as well. It might just be enough. I have no idea, though, how many soldiers we have in the center. We've got a rifleman over here. Oh, the other corners are all emptied out. No, there's another one over here. The mortars are gone and abandoned. We have the Vickers on this side still opening up. He's taking fire in the rear now. He's going to have to try and turn his, his barrel facing the enemy. Oh, he, he's like actually shifting between targets. He's not like finishing. Look, he's not finishing him, him off. He's just suppressing. Oh, now he actually hit him. Nice. Uh, they're, they're moving from target to target. Oh no, the MP-18s here. In the front. Oh, they are going to be a pain in the ass. 
can tell you that much. The valiant last stand here. I see two uh, American soldiers not too far away from each other. Make that zero. Oh man. And there was a few more survivors here, but those MP18s are gonna make quick work out of the, the soldiers in the trenches. We have another soldier hiding over here. Oh, actually two. Yeah, better make sure you have uh, all the rounds you need. Oh, and that grenade is going to land perfectly. What a close game. It looks like the Germans are going to are gonna seal the victory here. Interesting. Uh, I've actually experienced a, a different result. Actually, quite a few many different results over the last couple of hours doing some testing and stuff. But this one, this one left a few German survivors. I think we're looking at like 40 to 50. I mean, that is literally just a few seconds or minutes of, of uh, artillery fire, and, and they're gone. I mean, look at the remaining... Look at all the bodies here outside the fort itself. Absolutely crazy. But this time around, ultimately, during my recording sessions, the Germans were victorious. Congratulations. Good battle. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys soon again. Thank you for watching. My name is Binduplex, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.